Now, here's the hosts of Top Story, Kelly Class and Jill Keen. Good morning and welcome. This is Top Story. And welcome to Jill. What? Hello. Hello. Welcome to Kelly. <laughs> welcome Se- to me. Yes. Seven three six zero three hundred is the number to call. Welcome Glad to you our listeners. It. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. what we're down to like forty one days now. Oh, stop. That's forty one. What to days, Christmas? So, no, till December thirty first. Oh, 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 what's it? What's what? New Year's. You're so excited about New yeah, Year's yeah, Eve. New, New Year's Eve. That will be my is last. That the deal? My last day, ladies and gentlemen. Why, Kelly? Why? I am uh, going on relief. You're going on relief. <laughs> I, think dad, I, I think I think I need a relief. Calls, I need a relief. <laughs> Please, I need to go on relief. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so and anyway. tomorrow night is the party. The party for Kelly. Yeah. He's retiring, and we, it's going to be at the Turf Club, five to eight. As a personal favor for me. Please come. Please come. I would hate to give a party and nobody came, you know? Oh, now you're giving the party. Yesterday you weren't giving the party. <laughs> no, now I'm, you're giving it. Please, I'm not please. giving the party. It is held for me. In I'll your be, honor. In, uh, well, whatever. We're going to retire your microphone. By my employer, Town Square Media. You know how that you probably don't know this. They retire jerseys, the numbers, so no one can use yeah. them again when you're a great athlete. Did you know that? I knew that, yes. Thank you. We're going to retire your microphone. I see. Or I thought maybe it was the chair. No. <laughs> A chair could use retiring. Yeah, I know. I'll have you know, I did announce it at Rotary yesterday. Oh, really? I did. That was nice of you. It was. I said, please. Did you get a standing ovation? They all said, Kelly who? Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) Wish you were there. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks, Jill. I love you. And they probably did, too. And they were like, you do a radio show? Yeah. "Ah." (laughs) Anyway, so I thought I would... uh, 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 they all, of course, ask, who's taking his place? I'm like, you're uh, irreplaceable. We don't know yet. I know. We're working on Rush Limbaugh, but there's a little uh, matter. God help me. The, the money is fine. He just, you know, doesn't know if he can live here. There's not. A, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do, we, I'm sorry. We, we don't have a Dunkin' Donuts here. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're so small. Uh, That's you know right. What? We don't have a Dunkin' Donuts. No, we do don't. We? I found that out about the first year because my best friend back in Boston, she loves Dunkin' Donuts. And kind of originated back there. So I was going to buy our gift card. I drove all the way around town, like looking for Dunkin' Donuts. And I'm like, Tom, do we have a Dunkin' Donuts? He said, no. <laughs> so I couldn't send her. You would have been looking for a long she, time. I know she loves Dunkin' Donuts. You know, I just wanted to send her a gift card, say hi. Hmm. Eh. Okay, well, there you go. There you we go. we got plenty of other nice donut shops. So Doug Mon brings us in donuts every Friday morning, and he always brings in some really good ones. But, you know, it's probably hard for Bonnie to redeem the gift card when she lives in Boston to buy her one from here. <laughs> from Jimmy John. The whole point. <laughs> Not Jimmy, Jim Bob's. Jim, Jim Bob's, so she could then maybe <laughs> use it in Boston. That was the point, Kelly. I know we have good donut uh, places anyway. here. <laughs> yes, we do. Hey, uh, we do have coming up, uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, Rob Green turkey trot. Mm -hmm. Uh, We also have the cops with the bad guys list coming in. I believe today will be uh, Sergeant uh, Ken Mensel from the Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department, if I am not mistaken. Uh, Or is it the city? No, no. He came, didn't he come last week? Well, yeah, he comes a lot, but he comes, what, is is this the third Thursday? No, it's not. No, so it'll be Ken, yeah. Next week will be the city PD, but it'll be thanks. Next week is, uh, Thursday is Thanksgiving, right? Third is the city, Cal. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That will be next Thursday, right? Well, we'll have no, to figure this out later. No, we're on the third. We're on the third one. Yeah. What are you? Oh. What okay. are you saying? I don't, well, I was mixed up. I'm sorry. So today then should be the city of Twin Falls. Yes. Yeah, I don't correct. know if they know that's it or not. That's what I'm but, saying. The city, and yeah, you're like, no. Usually I get an email, but I didn't get an we email. We had this Ken time. on last week. I know, but he's on a couple the second, of weeks in fourth, a row. and fifth. Yeah. See. Second, fourth. And fifth, we're on the third. Okay, whatever. When is retirement? Uh, yeah. And then at nine o'clock, we have Sharon Brashears from the Valley House. Yeah. And she is an excellent photographer. We might even talk about photography too. She came to Rotary yeah. yesterday, did a presentation. They're really? so beautiful. In- she has a calendar she's selling. I bought oh, really? One. Yeah. Yeah, she, she posts a lot of her pictures on Facebook. And beautiful. It's just, oh, yeah. Really. Well, anyway, that'll be coming up at nine o'clock. We got a call, so let's take a top okay. story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kelly and Jill. Well, good morning. Hello, how are you? Hey, Kelly, I really liked your Facebook uh, commercial bill for your retirement. But I, I think that shawl sitting on a rocking chair was just a little bit over the top. 
Well, you know, Kelly. Why? Why was it over the top? <laughs> well, you and know, the pipe, the dog in the arm, the book, all of that was excellent. But a rocking chair and a shawl. <laughs> And that was uh, that was Mabel. Hey, that's what we do. We do stuff over the top, buddy. Over the top. <laughs> and Mabel's quite upset because she needs SAG wages. Yeah. So she well, isn't being I'll compensated. See you tomorrow where I can harass you more. All right. Sounds Please good. Please come, Kyle. Kyle. Appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for those who have seen the uh, the ad running on uh, I think KMVT and a couple of others, my little dog, Mabel, that was Mabel. Mabel. And she's upset because she wanted top billing. Yeah, and so I'm sorry, she's, she's not getting comp. Did you give her extra bones or something, some compensation? <laughs> oh, believe me, she gets plumped. Her agent has been calling <laughs> every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have no idea how upset she is. <laughs> uh, no, that's No, I do have an idea yeah. how upset she is. Aww. All right, so we do have some uh, news this morning. A Gooding School employee's... I'm sorry, as Gooding School employees push for Superintendent Mary Larson to resign, this is from the Times News, records show that she received unsatisfactory marks in her last job. You'll know that, <clears throat> if you've been listening to the show, that there are, is some turmoil in the Gooding School District. Just, and, a, just uh, a titch. Ninety percent of the employees voted earlier <laughs> this week as a no confidence in Superintendent Mary Larson. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> that issue continues. Uh, she turned in a resignation letter last March as superintendent of the Strasburg Public Schools in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. So then she came to Gooding. Her last day there was June 30th. She started to work in Gooding on July 1st, and apparently things have not gone well. Uh, I love, I love this time. part. The Gooding School District paid up to $5,000 to consult and sue. How do you say it? Bet, bet it I would say Badia. Badia. Media, a retired yeah. Emmett School District superintendent to advertise the position. You know, we're in the wrong business. $5,000 <laughs> to put an ad online? Where was it on Craigslist? Where's, where's Craigslist? That's, <laughs> I'll, do it for, I'll do it for $4,500. Yeah, I'll uh, put an ad on Craigslist. Yeah, but Sue said that she didn't interview <laughs> him. She got 5000 just to do an yeah. ad. Uh, they didn't, we're, I mean, I'm sorry, but if you knew this, the superintendent had problems, which clearly they must have. Why would you then? I don't hire I, them. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know the background on this deal. I do know this though. Because we only get ten percent of the information. I, I am in the wrong business. Yeah. When I on my last day on uh, December thirty first, I'm going to become a consultant, and I'm yeah. going to start charging outrageous prices for a little bit of information. For ridiculous things. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> we need a consultant for this. A consultant for that. Yeah. Five thousand yeah. dollars to place an ad. She didn't even interview him. It wasn't like she was a recruiter. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know where the, if she got all the, I don't know, probably in some of the professional uh, uh, places where they put these ads, they probably charge some, I don't know. But, Whatever, uh, but smokes. you know what, if she had... Um, um bad recommendations, bad whatever, why would you hire her? Unsatisfactory marks? Would that be, the, I mean, there's so many people out there, so many, why would you... Uh, I don't know. I, I, and I now you it. need a facilitator, are, five to six thousand grand, to facilitate to make this situation work. There are so many things in this world today that I do not understand, y'all. I just one don't think this one's going to work out. Ninety percent of your employees are yeah. unhappy, and you're going to have a five to six thousand dollar facilitator saying, "No, no, we can make this work." Like, let's put a square hole in a round peg. Like, I don't get it. Cut well, your losses. Fire them. Maybe pay them out their full contract like CSI did. <laughs> well, that's probably what they would have to do. Would they have to if you have unsatisfactory? I, Are there no causes for termination I don't know. And in these contracts? I don't know, and we can't contracts? find that out because it's a secret. We never get information. <laughs> it's a secret. It's anyway, a secret. Uh, my thoughts and prayers go to Gooding. <laughs> like, what is going on yeah, there? On both sides, you know? I mean, I don't know what the deal was. Well, and... I, I, you know what? I'm sorry, but it doesn't sound like she, the complaints are pretty bad. Well, uh, I do know this. The state is asking a judge to take another look at his decision to void the $60 million Idaho Education Network broadband contract. Uh, in a 12-page motion filed Tuesday, the state's outside counsel is asking District Judge Patrick Owen to either clarify his November 10 ruling or toss out the contract. I'm sorry, to toss out the contract or reconsider his decision. Uh, Let's just spend more taxpayer dollars. Uh, you Here, know what? Judge, can you just, it 
can you, can change, you change your mind? Your mind? Yeah. Can you change your mind? We should have asked the decision Grant you on came out one. with doesn't work for us. Yeah, because you know we changed our mind and just changed the contract, and there you go. Why would you waste more money? Why we have spent a fortune? Well, it's on an this. attempt to make you look like you are justified in what you did. That's what it is. Well, of course. I mean, is any? <laughs> You know what? Today, the head could explode. <laughs> Owen said the contract was void when the state cut out one contractor on the high school broadband project, Syringa Networks. And because that voided the contract, he said the state cannot salvage the deal. Well, it so, wasn't a fair process to begin with. So how do you salvage it? The ruling has critical implications. The state's attorney contends this leaves the state without a contract on which to order and run critical wide area network services for state agencies or under which to operate and fund the education network. Well, uh, bad decisions and uh, situations like this have bad consequences. And in this case, it looks like it could be the kids uh, yeah. in the schools in Idaho who will be suffering the consequences. Can't take the classes they need to graduate. Then what? I have not heard, and, and maybe it's out there and well-known and I just don't know it, as to why Syringa was dropped. Um, from the contract after it was al already a done deal. Well, I think they kind of alluded to that in the the one editorial comment the other day. It was someone's buddy, some well-connected someone who's having his buddy do the contract. See, if that's the case, well, that's sort then of then someone it, needs to lose their job. I think that's what Judy said the other day. <clears throat> someone needs to lose their job if that is the case. Well, it should have been the governor, but guess what? We reelected him. The motion is just the latest legal maneuver in the five-year-old legal battle over the Idaho Education Network contract. A system now provides broadband for all the high schools in the state, 219. Mm. So, you know, some of those kids who are on the verge of graduation uh, by taking online <clears throat> courses. that's the only way they can get them. Here's, uh, we got we got a call. Somebody okay, knows good. about this. Hopefully. Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> good morning. You know, as a public policy measure... I think the court should allow the broadband contact contract to stay until these people graduate because as a public policy measure that would cause the least amount of disruption. I don't think and the courts are going to the they just said that the contract was void though. I mean somebody's got to pay for it. Yeah. I don't I don't think the court said that it couldn't go on. That's up to the state to figure out how to make it go on. I We're believe. paying for it. Well, if they say the contract was void, then they're saying that they that they uh, can't pay for it anymore because the contract was void. Well, Correct? and the feds, well, the feds well, were paying for it, and then they stopped paying for it because of the. Um, the state has been paying for it ever since right. it was found. Ever since the bottom fell out of this thing, to the tune of about eleven million dollars a year. Yeah. <clears throat> and it looks like, and it ends in February. That doesn't include. So we're include, going to have to uh, do it again. Doesn't include attorney's fees, so. et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> we'll be right back here on Top Story. Seven three six zero three hundred is the number to call. True. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call. Welcome back here on Top Story. And uh, we were talking, uh, we always talk about far more of Idaho. And I know that nobody's irrigating right now because, well, it just wouldn't work out. No. And uh, for, for a number of reasons. For so many reasons. But we will be soon. It'll be here sooner than you know it. And uh, coming up here in the spring, you're going to want to know what your crops are doing, how they're doing. And the best way to do that is with an overflight with infrared barren, which is uh, they fly over your fields and take photography with infrared photography, which shows up a lot of stuff that you don't see with a naked eye or even regular photography. And they do that at far more of Idaho. You can tell if it's too wet or too dry and that uh, some changes need to be made. Uh, there needs to be some maintenance done on your irrigation system. They can do all that for you at Far More of Idaho. Their number is 324-3341, and you can find them online at farmoreofidaho.com. We have with us this morning Shauna Obenchain, who is the owner of The Anchor in Twin Falls, and Cecilia Gracida, who is the marketing executive for Rob Green. And we have, it's not the running of the bulls now, it's the running of the turkeys. Second annual. <laughs> turkeys Tele can run? Yeah. <laughs> well, you run, you run with your them. turkey, for sure. That, yeah, that's what my wife always says. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go <laughs> running sure with the turkey. not sure if you're carrying it or it's beside <laughs> that's you. That's right. <laughs> I know, exactly. Right. That's right. So, uh, uh, Shauna, tell Tell us what this is all about. Well, we um, started this last year, so this is our second annual um, little turkey run, fun run. We just kind of kick off the holidays, so um, come to the Anchor on Saturday. And uh, first hundred people that um, sign up get a free T-shirt. This year we partnered and are happy to do so with Rob Green, 
Um, so the race will be to Rob Green, about a half, uh, one and a half miles down Blue Lakes. And um, uh, the, all you need to enter is a frozen turkey. And you carry your Ooh. turkey. All you carry your down. turkey the whole way? You carry your yeah. frozen You're turkey. You're frozen. You better wear gloves. <laughs> well, this year you might have to have gloves and hat and snow boots. And oh, it. yeah. But it makes it fun. I mean, people really got into it last year. It was it was a great time. And we have prizes for um, best-dressed best turkey, heaviest turkey, most turkeys. So this is kind of an endurance race, really. When you stop well, it think doesn't about sound it. to a racer or someone who runs that it's very far. But really, when you carry a when frozen turkey oh, yeah. and it's yeah. ten pounds, mm-hmm. right. it, it's fun. And we and you don't have to run. It's a walk, stroll, carry it in your wagon, stroll it in the stroller, oh, carry okay. it in a backpack. We don't care how you get it there. What time? Oh, well, what that's... time does it start? We start. We we leave the anchor around eleven o'clock. We'll all go up to Walgreens, cross the street, and then take off and. I know. I was going to say they're not closing down Blue Lakes. No, no. (laughs) We just kind of mosey down the dry, uh, the the sidewalk, and like I said last year, the runners were there and back before we got halfway down because you just you you just get there however you want to. It's more for fun (laughs) and to donate, you know, turkeys. So, but this year Rob Green joined us, and so um, they have fun things for us to do. What do you got going, Cecilia? Well, we um, would like to give back to our community. So what we've decided to do is we are matching turkeys. So for those uh, individuals who like participate. Like now it's matchmaking turkeys. You run with that's them. That's right. And we're going to match, match turkeys. To make the turkeys. Wow. Yeah, that's right. So it all goes back to our local food bank. So as many as they donate, you guys are going to. Well, it's one per, per participant. So uh-huh. there are prizes for those who bring in the most turkeys. But. Yeah, we're doing one per participant. So wow, mm. that's right. exciting. So is there a goal, a number that you're looking for, or just whatever you get? Well, I think we've kind of discussed around 200. Yeah, We'd love last to do year three, but we for first year just getting it out there, we had 75 turkeys. Really? So of course our goal is to beat that. Yeah, yeah. by double, really. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Yep. So if and you got 150, you'd be tickled. We'd be tickled. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So who are you going to donate the turkeys to? Oh, that's to our local food banks here. So, okay. Yep. They are in big need. They are. They are. Absolutely. And and we want to be able to give back. We have such, you know, we're, we're blessed beyond measure. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's so nice. Now, does, does, I'll say, so you say folks, right, can they register online or do they register at the no, anchor? No, no. There's the... really no registration. It takes a frozen turkey to enter. And if you're there and one of the first hundred, you get a free race t-shirt and... Um, you know, it's like again, it's just more for fun, and okay. we all just so they're not there aren't many rules and regulations no. here. Just kind of show no. up with a turkey and have fun, and, yeah. and try to yeah. get it to Rob Green. Yeah. That's right, get it to Rob Green. They're gonna yeah. um, provide shuttles yeah. back to the anchor, and then what? They're not running back without well, their turkeys. Can. Come on, you can if you want to. <laughs> but... Have them walk back, run yeah. back. But if you don't want to and you want a ride, then there's a ride, and then we have after party fun, yeah. food, and we're you know, giving away specials. tickets. We're giving away BSU tickets for the 29th. So. Oh. Oh, that should be fun. What game is that? Uh, That's the Utah game. Oh, so that should be good. That'll be good. Oh, that sounds like fun. So second annual. That's right. Second annual. All right. Shauna, why did you decide to think of this? How did you think of this? I just came up with it last year and just thought it would be a fun event. And I was surprised that there were um, as many people there and dressed up and having fun. And um, for some of the racers, this was their third race that morning. Wow. Because, oh, my goodness. Yeah. These are some turkey trotters. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. And so um, it was a good way for them to end the day, and, and then they stayed. Then they you stayed know, at the anchor the, and had a good day. time. Yeah. Well, we're just so about out of time, so can they call one or both of you to get more information if they need it? Sure, I know it absolutely. sounds simple to me, but, you know, you never yeah. know. Give absolutely. out a number, Shauna. Yeah. Um, our number is 733-6566. We also have it all, the details on our Facebook account. All right, so, very good. MC. And ours is uh, 733-1823. Very One, good. Eight, two, three. Okay, so, so Saturday. Yeah, Shauna Obenchain and uh, Cecilia Grisita, we appreciate you telling us about the yeah. run with the turkeys. Thanks Thank for helping you. out All the right. community. Sounds like yeah. fun. And we got the cops of the bad guys list next here on Top Story. 736. Wow. Got to turn some stuff down. 736 0300. 0300 is always the number to call here on Top Story. Uh, welcome back. Uh, we have Sharon Brashears coming up at 9 o'clock uh, to talk about the Valley House. Uh, we also have the fact that the president will be speaking tonight uh, and uh, justifying his position as emperor and changing uh, U.S. law 
in the, on the immigration bill. So oh, that geez, should be interesting. Like we'll be able Ronald to talk Reagan about that. Ronald Reagan and George H. W. They were, but they, were whatever. they were actually clarifying the laws. Oh, or, or were what they? they were doing. He's yes. clarifying but it too. But the emperor now decided that he can just change the law. So really? we'll be talking about that coming up in a little I'm sure bit. Sure, Boehner has a lawsuit but, ready. But meanwhile, meanwhile, back at the ranch. Uh, if you didn't think the oh, election season, wait a minute. what? We don't have the cops this morning. They didn't show up. So just uh, in case you were waiting for the cops or the bad guys. I list. know. I, I don't know what happened. I don't, I, sometimes they get caught up. There might be something happening. Yeah, and there might you be something what? going on. That's right. We are not top priority. Their their stuff is top yeah, priority. Yeah, we need to talk to them about that. But for right now, That we need not. to change our priority. <laughs> that, right. When you have something more pressing. We need to be a little more up the ladder. You just leave that crime scene and say, I'm sorry, I have a radio interview <laughs> that's now. That's right. There you go. See? <laughs> <laughs> but just in case your head hasn't exploded yet by Republican uh, Idaho re- elections, Republican Party, if you haven't been disgusted enough by this party, here you oh, go. Oh, listen to Here's that. Here's the cherry on the top for the state. I'll tell you what I'm disgusted by. Okay, well, you know what? It's It's hitting close to home this election season, and if you don't think it is, come on. Here's the cherry on the top. The Idaho Republican Party has named former U.S. Senator Larry Craig as its financial chair of its executive committee. Uh, Party officials said Wednesday that Craig fills in an empty volunteer fundraising position. And then again, whenever they mention Larry Craig, this is what follows. Craig was arrested in a 2007 airport bathroom sex sting. He was accused of soliciting sex in a men's bathroom at the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport by an undercover officer. According to the officer, Craig tapped his foot under the stall and signaled that he wanted sex. Then they go on to say he retired in 2009, where he then faced legal battles with the Federal Elections Commission over his use of campaign funds. In September, a federal George, a judge ordered him to pay nearly $242,000 to the U.S. Treasury for improperly using campaign funds to cover legal expenses involving his sex sting. So I'm sure the Idaho Republican Party must feel very comfortable having him as financial chair of his executive committee. I just have to say one thing. Is there no one else in Idaho that could be is qualified? I mean, could you not find anyone else for whenever this man is ever reported on anything in the paper these two things will follow him forever. And do you really feel comfortable when he thinks it's okay for the taxpayers to uh, pay his legal fees for some solicitation of sex in an airport that he might have the best judgment for financial dealings for the state party? I'm just saying I don't really care because I'm a Democrat, but does it not make you wonder as Republicans out there that there's no one else qualified is everyone else in jail that can't take the position? What is the deal? Okay, I suppose being the other half of this uh, you duo... You can't possibly that I, defend I this one. I am the, the conservative side of this viewpoint here. Don't even I would to be expected this. to uh, justify and maybe even apologize for this choice. Uh, let it be said and let it be known, I'm sorry, I cannot. I don't know. This Thank is you. going to be... A public relations nightmare for the Idaho GOP. Um, not to say that he might not be totally qualified for that position, but it's 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 the reputation that we are wrangling with here. The two uh, paragraphs will always follow his name. That's true. Forever. You're absolutely right, and uh, I think the Idaho Republican Party has been through some tough times uh, here in the last year with the state convention. Uh, they uh, they wound up doing fine though in the uh, in the elections as everybody knows. So maybe they saw that as a signal that well things are settling we down, so we can go care. ahead and do something else now that that is a little bit weird. But I I don't know I I don't understand this because it just seems to me like uh, it was there no one else that you could find you for have this position. No one else for the for his reputation. I mean this is going to be a PR nightmare. Seven three six zero three hundred. It already is. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, talk about the pot calling the stainless steel kettle black again. Jill has her goal to bash the Republican Party with that thing that they have in the White House. First of all, Ridiculous. we're talking about Idaho politics, and secondly, that thing is your president. But how do you feel about Larry Craig being? Oh, no, fine. He, 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 well, he we don't, don't want to. We wouldn't want to discuss the issue. 
The issue is Idaho, the Idaho Republican Party. I don't... Uh, Come on. I don't understand if they didn't get together and say, hey, what's this going to do? How is this going to look? I, I don't understand unless they think, well, hey, we're the party of second chances. I don't know. Let's we're give the them another party chance. Of, I don't know. I don't know what it is. The voters don't care. Not, we can, we just, can take money. We can embezzle money. We can transfer money. We can lose money. Don't you now, worry. don't get carried away We here. will still Senator elect Craig you. Senator was not that bad of a senator during, the, during his terms. It's his reputation that follows him now that is the concern here. And we'll be you right think? back to see what you think on Top Story. 736-0300 was the number to call. The phones are open. We would like to know what you think of uh, Larry Craig uh, being appointed as the financial chair of the Idaho GOP. Uh, just to get an opinion. Just to get opinions. I'll tell you, the comments after the stories Hilarious. in the uh, printed media were... <laughs> you know they were kind of one-sided, but you know it's interesting to get a see what it people is funny. think. You know what? When I read comments like that, some of them I think these people are so clever. I mean, hilarious. <laughs> some of them are hilarious. Well, the folks at uh, Clearwater Power Equipment are clever too because they're saying, "Hey, we've got chainsaws." Because mm. if you underestimated how cold this winter was going to be, and you didn't quite get enough uh, firewood all cut up, uh, that's not a problem. They got Husqvarna and uh, Echo chainsaws. They also have, I saw it the other day, a hydraulic log splitter down there. Mm. So they got everything to take care of it, of you, and all you got to do is stop by and, and see what they got. Check out the prices, make the purchase, and take it home. And if you have any problems with it, any issues, they are there to fix it because that's what they do. They service and they sell this stuff, and that's all they do. They don't sell lumber. They don't sell uh, kitchen appliances. They sell power equipment at uh, Clearwater Power Equipment. And uh, they want you to stop by, 252 Washington Street. You can call them at 734-7767 and tell them that Kelly and Jill sent you. All right, let the uh, let the opinions Let the phones begin. 736-0300, top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm a conservative independent who has to kind of vote more Republican. I kind of find that there's distaste in both Republican and Democrat. I don't like agreeing with Jill, but on this one, I'm going to side <laughs> with her. You would have to. Uh, Come on. <laughs> I said I'm going to side with you. Thank and you. What, what this stems from, I'm sure, is when Craig was in office, he scratched some high Idaho officials' backs. Now, Saber paid back. He's getting his back scratched back. And I have said for years, we take... Good people from society who have good intentions, we vote them into office, and for some reason when they get into office, they take a stupid pill or something. I, I don't know why it happens there. It seems like they totally change. Sure, their politics does that to them or what, but no, I don't. There's Yeah, there's tons of people more qualified to break for this. Well, this wasn't an office this this stemmed from a personal thing he was doing in a bathroom in minneapolis and then tried to I, cover I, it up i realize that yeah but how he probably got this was he scratched some people's backs when he was in office now he's getting his back scratched back yeah. i think that was part of the problem <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh let the one-liners bam let the one-liners begin uh -huh. wide okay. stance thank Everything you very much else. for that thank opinion you. Seven three six zero three hundred. top story you were on the air what do you think uh good morning well idaho politics just amazes me and that's why i am a registered republican more of a democrat at heart and an independent by nature i'm a registered <laughs> republican so i can vote in the elections that actually count in this state the primaries, because they're really the only ones that do. Mm -hmm. As far as Larry Craig's deal goes, it's, you know, this is like insanity run amok. Mm -hmm. You know, if and perhaps if maybe they don't find a job for him there, perhaps the Gooding uh, School District <laughs> can use him as the superintendent. <laughs> because the people in this state, like the previous guy said, I don't know what happens, whether it's in the water or they're just stupid pills being passed around. You know, just amazed me. I had to, thank you very much. I yeah, had to ask you. myself, um, when I heard about this, when I first heard about it, which was yesterday, I had to ask myself, I said, no, wait a minute, this this has to be some kind of a, 
a joke. Is this April Fools or something? I thought surely they wouldn't. And then I wondered. You now Stephen Yates is the he's the new yeah. uh, high guy for the for the GOP. He came from back east. Remember, he was Cheney worked with Cheney. Yeah. He's well, known these people, so he probably has dealt with Craig. I don't know what and, has um, happened, but my, I don't know why you would think this is okay. I act. This thought actually went through my mind. I thought, is he has he been sent as a subversive out here oh stop to ruin oh, the stop. idaho gop oh please no it, it really did cross my mind really pulling, doing this i thought what does he not surely he knows larry craig coming from well, his background in washington dc and again he hey, helped him once larry before. craig was not a bad senator for the state of idaho but sometimes when you do things that are really bad and really stupid i mean that kind of you know, shoots you out of the saddle for any possible positions in the future. Well, especially and I when thought that that was probably one that happened to him, but apparently not. Well, apparently, and, and, and wherever he goes, these paragraphs follow him. Plus, he didn't have the best judgment on what taxpayers should pay for or not. And, and he is probably totally capable of, of doing whatever needs to be done in that position. However, the reputation is the issue here. 736-0300, top story, you're on the air. What do you think? Good morning. Hi. Good morning. The thing that bothers me, it doesn't matter what party it is, but what happened to morals and values and beliefs that doesn't seem to follow them once they get in office? And, you know, that's hard to explain to children that you're trying to raise it, those type of things, to believe in and have morals and and beliefs and values. Doesn't it seem like to you as it does me that the, the worse you are, the more you are rewarded? It does. And when you're trying to bring up grandkids or children and you're trying to reward them to do the right thing, and they see anywhere from office to football or basketball, these people doing these type of things, how do you explain it to kids? Yeah. I don't yeah, know. I know. I guess you say don't do what they do. But Thank unfortunately, these people are their role models. And, you know, with Adrian Peterson and Ray Rice and everything. Oh, now and Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. Yeah, man. I, talk about a shot. I don't know. Because he, he faced those acts. And I don't want to switch the, the deal no, over to just, him. But yeah, just as a kind of a rabbit trail here, uh, he was accused of that originally some time ago. Oh, yeah. And... uh you know, I just don't know. I don't know. I would like to think not. I would like to think that Bill Cosby was not uh, guilty of doing something like that. I know there are a lot of gold diggers out there who would do. They would do anything. At this anything. point in their life, have you seen some of them? Thirteen well, year, thirteen women years later. Because back in the day, you were lucky if you were ever heard, as opposed to going against to someone like that. Sure, so right, right. You understand, understand that, but 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 the the climate now is more open to that. And and I don't know what they're and and you know what hey if if he did that then then the guy needs to pay for it. Well, they he, can't he, file he, charges too late. Yeah, it's too late. So yeah, you know it doesn't matter. But, but when you talk about things wise. like that, well, reputation wise with Larry Craig soliciting sex in a bathroom. Yeah. I mean, and you know to think that he didn't, uh, he pled guilty, and he wasn't going to tell anyone. Never came back, told his wife. Never told anyone. If my husband. My beloved Tom was ever accused of that. Like, say, you had, you know, a wide stance. Come on, you're tapping your foot, whatever. If he was ever accused from that, you would have heard him screaming from Minneapolis. Absolutely. Do you yes. know what I mean? Like Agreed. any Agreed. man who was like falsely accused. Are you kidding me? Uh, we would have heard it from from uh, Minneapolis, but yeah. he didn't. And the only reason they tried to fight it was Arlen, Arlen Specter. Oh, no, Larry, you should fight this. Otherwise... It was just under the rug. He wasn't going to do anything. He told his attorney he pled guilty, and it was a reporter who found out from the call sheet of crimes in Minneapolis, and that was it. Yeah. Um, I, I, and I'm sorry, but you would have this as your financial guy who then tried to pass off his campaign funds, thinking taxpayers should pay for that, that that was in the course of his business? I don't think so. I don't know. It, it doesn't make sense to me either. I, I Thank I, goodness. I, you know, I mean, hey, I... <laughs> I can only justify so much, and this is beyond what I can justify. And and let me tell you this: uh, uh, I I side with the Republicans most of the time because I am a conservative, but I you know I I vote for the person, and I always have, and probably always will. Uh, so there are some things that you have to back off 
at times, no matter how big of a supporter you are at times, and say, look, you have really stepped over the line here uh, just because you are a party sympathizer or something like that doesn't mean that you justify and uh, and okay everything that happens. And I, I, I just don't get this. I mean, how uh, again, all summer long, the Republicans in Idaho have have had a tough time, and it started at the state convention, and of course everybody knew, oh, that's the end of the GOP in Idaho, which I knew was not the case. But, you know, they went through some tough times, and then they finally get through that, and everything looks good, and at the election, uh, everything was looking good. And now this, uh, it's like, are you are you doing this on purpose, I guess well, is what I'm asking. Are you trying to bring negative attention to the Idaho Republican Party when it's already had plenty of that? What in the name of the good Lord in heaven are you thinking <laughs> when you do some of this stuff? I think they think they're stupid. Uh, Voters uh, well, are stupid. They have done whatever. They put up candidates. Point. And we're stupid. And guess what? We reelected these people. We are stupid. And then they well, think, well, we'll just appoint Larry Craig and no one will say a word. Hey, President Obama thinks we're stupid. So, you know, I mean, th- that, that, that can go right along here. And, but here's the deal. A month from now, six weeks from now, and I'm sure they had this discussion. They probably said, okay, look, Larry, probably when we first do Larry. this, there's going to be a lot of repercussions about this. There's going to be a lot of discussion. There'll be, you know, the talking heads will be talking about it on talk radio, and there will be letters to the editor. But don't worry. In a few weeks, this will all go away, and, and then nobody will ever give You'll it a second fine. thought. And you know what? They're probably absolutely right. Well, what are you going to do? What, what 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 are right. people going to do? Are you going to write the Idaho Republican Party? Maybe you should, or write Steve Yates and go. Are you out of your mind? Why would you have this man in this position? Why? Why has anyone contacted know, Steve Yates? I'm sure they have. I'm sure that his phone. I, is I would like to know ringing, one person, please. Ringing off please the call desk. and tell me you called them, please. So I don't know that that's just. I, I just is like still taking just, uh, just, uh, still uh, taking calls too. By the way, if you want to weigh in on the seven three six zero three hundred. Doesn't it just blows your well, mind? Well, just about the time you think things have settled down, then it then there's something else that yeah. comes up like this. People are and they still don't, we don't need are, this. People are still wounded by the election. I mean, I still go out and people are still. I'm a Republican. I don't know how they got these people got elected, especially Sherry Ibarra. That's really plucking people's nerves. It's just you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't know, but uh, maybe over Total the next resignation. few weeks we'll be able to. To uh, get some opinions on this with some of the uh, those that be you now, Steve Millington uh, won't be here next Tuesday nor the Tuesday oh, after. How convenient, well, Steve! Fine, so answer the question, pal. Well, when he comes back, I'm sure that'll be one of the. I see. Will I still be here? Oh, stop! Might have to leave it up to you to ask him that. Oh, stop! You'll still be here. Hey, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So. All right. Well, I guess we beat this horse to death. I don't know what else to say. It's, it's, I was surprised. I was shocked. I was. I was thinking. Oh my God! You're really. I thought it was far. We're gonna have to talk about this. You yeah. Know, yeah. When I saw it yesterday, I thought. Uh, hmm. And here's a news flash. How do you ever use the term "wide stance" again without thinking of Larry Craig? No, it's now the punchline of every joke. Your wide stance. You don't even have to say anything more than that. You know what you're talking about. It has changed. It's changed that term it forever. It changed the English language for we Idahoans uh, forever. forever. Uh, I know. I know I'm I know. sorry. He was cursed with a wide stance. Know. He just had a wide stance, Kelly. How wide is your stance? I don't know. Well, it's not that wide. <laughs> and it's never going to be that wide. So, I don't know. It, it, it's too bad that it has come to this. Like I said, Larry Craig was, not, was a fairly good senator for the state of Idaho during the years that he... Uh, you know what? I feel bad for Larry. In you know this... what? You mess up on this scale and... Uh, well, apparently it doesn't matter. Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, on the widening stance thing, uh, on the wide stance thing, it's funny because a friend of mine a few years back, as the Larry Craig thing was breaking, yeah. at Scandal, he uh, was getting a petition together not to widen Falls Avenue up there by CSI because he lived there, and he didn't like it because the Times News, the headline of the story that they did on his petition drive was, Resident has a widening stance. <laughs> <laughs> you are serious, right? Yeah, he did that. He did that. They did that. The Times News. Aye. Aye. <laughs> I don't know. 
I'm Stra- sorry. Truth is stranger than fiction sometimes. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about the Valley House with Sharon Brashears uh, up next uh, after the news from the Fox Radio New Net Radio. Uh, oh, okay, anyway, whatever. It's coming you up. You know it's happening. That's right. It's coming up. <laughs> We are back. Seven three six zero three hundred. Always the number to call. Welcome back, Jill. Thanks, Cal. Same to you. We're uh, experiencing a tropical heat wave here today. It's thirty-one degrees. Wow. So we're uh, probably going to get up around forty for the high today, or maybe a little over. Oh my goodness. We're going to be back to mowing lawns and you know sitting in the shade, drinking cold ones mm-hmm. here in a day or two. Don't you think? I think so. Now the weather. Flip flops. Yeah, flip-flops, that's right. There and the weather go. is supposed to be pretty good for the party tomorrow night. Now, Saturday, we uh, might have some snow moving in, but I put in a special... Thank goodness it's not Saturday. I put in a special order to the weatherman saying, hey, we need some good weather Friday night so people will come to my retirement party. Uh, yes. At the Turf Club between 5 and 8 o'clock. Tomorrow night, please come, please come. Kelly's worried no one will come. That's right, I am. And what didn't a- I announce it, Sharon? I announced it yesterday. She did. She did. I did. <laughs> did she really get a, a, a standing ovation? Oh, they all clapped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I told them they all said, Kelly who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, our guest is Sharon Brashears, and uh, Sharon is uh, the, you're the director of Valley House. All right, first of all, before we get into it, tell us what Valley House is and what it does. Well, uh, Valley House is our local homeless shelter here in the Twin Falls uh, Magic Valley area, but also in the eight county area. Uh, the only homeless shelter that brings in families with children. That's why it's so important, um, you know, for us to be here. We are community funded and community ran, 19 years old in the Magic Valley, and um, we help homeless families, you know, we help families that have found themselves in need and not able to pay their rent. Um, they find themselves in out in the street or in a car, and that's not a place to have your children. And um, so we are there for families, also single women, and we help many, many, many single men. How much room do you have yeah. there? Because I know the need must be great. Well, um, right now we have 11 families um, at the Valley House and out in our family units, and then we um, also have families in our main house. Um, I have a couple of ladies with children in our main house. Um, the main house also houses single women, and so um, we house up to 70 per night. Um, sometimes 70? You have that seven, much? Oh, yes. Wow. And, um, Sometimes we have to, if it's a single woman and, a, and, and one child out in a unit, we have to say, hey, this is a homeless shelter. We've got to move another single woman and a child in. And, I mean, we group them up yeah. um, because there is such a need right now. Have you seen the need increase? How long have you been doing this, Sharon? Well, I've been at Valley House for 11 years. Um, and, yes, um, since I came 11 years ago, I believe that year we helped 123 people. Um, 11 years ago. Now, this year alone, we're going to help way over 4,000 people. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's no huge. No kidding. It's a no huge, kidding. huge need going yes, on right is. now. And the year's not over yet. And the year's not over yet. Because wow. they even, I think I saw a news story on the kids, how many kids are homeless that go to school. Like over 200 kids are homeless yes. in this area. So you wonder, where are these people sleeping at night? Um. Surely you, surely you can't house all of them. We can't house 400, no. Um, but we help to find resources for the families. If we can't bring them in, um, we don't want them out in the street and cold. And so we mm. will, you know, we're having to put them up in motels. Um, we just sent a family um, down to their family down in Texas um, because there was, you know, no place for them to go. And actually, they needed to get back to Texas. But we helped them get back to Texas, but also put them up in a motel until until we could get them yeah. um, situated. So, you know, we we try to do everything that we can to find a resource for them. Um, we've had to send single men, um, you know, on buses to Boise or to, um, to Pocatello. And so, you know, we... We just work with them and see what the need is and, you know, try to meet whatever we can. And what, where do you get the funds to do that, Sharon? Oh, wow. We are community funded. Right. Um, we, we rely upon the good hearts of the community to mm-hmm. step up and to help us out, organizations and churches and individuals. Uh, we also have um, transitional housing um, that the um, county commissioners came to us about three or four years ago and... Um, said you know they had these um apartments and would we like to lease them and so we leased them for a dollar 
a year and that we are able to transition our families into those apartments. The income from that is for our emergency fund, for motels, for gas, for bus tickets, for, you know, um, it, it's just amazing what that has done. So, so they pay to live there? Uh... In the transitional housing, okay. um, you know, they uh, we work with um, a management company and they help to you know, to manage that, to, you know, collect rents and that. And um, and so that actually has helped us. So we partnered with the Twin Falls Police Department and the Sheriff's Department that if they find a family in crises in the evening or on the weekends, they are able to put them up into some motels that we have partnered with. And then Valley House pays for that. Um, and so, yes, we are okay. putting families up in motels and, you know, whatever we can to help. Do you feel like you're almost like the last resort? I mean, really, where would people go if they didn't have you? Um, homeless families in the eight-county area. Um, eight-county area. Yes. Uh, amazing. Yes. We are the only homeless shelter for families with children. And so, um, yeah, I don't know what they would do without us. And you really only have 70 s spots, really, where you, I mean, for eight counties, yeah. that's huge. And, what and do you think the need lot. really is? Oh, it, it has to be huge. It really does, because even, you know, just since the weather has become cold, people are coming to our door, you know, they're not able to pay their power, they're not able to, I mean, and, and their power's been shut off, or their water's been shut off, and, um, you know, it's just people are really hurting right now, and... Um, but they're still in their homes. Yes, some of them are, are just some, without power just, or water. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Is that amazing? It's yeah. has it's a very sad situation. We have a caller. Top story, you're on the air with Sharon Brashears. Hey, uh, good morning, Kelly. Good morning, lovely Jill. Uh listen, I would like to commend the uh, Smiley House for what they're doing. I really appreciate that. And I have a question for you. Do you think that um the reason why there's more uh seems to be a lot more homeless people is because there, there is no resource to help them out, or they just overextended their 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 time um, for the usage of uh, whatever resources the federal government or state government little bit that they offered. Did they, uh, is that what's happening, or what? Did you get that? I got that. Um, I would say you know food stamps have been cut. They don't get they don't get the amount that they used to get. Um, single people especially. Um, you know, they 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 range from, you know, seventeen dollars to maybe a hundred dollars for food stamps. I mean, um, you know, people are hungry and, and yeah. they can't live on that. And if they're if they're disabled or they're not able to go out and and, and you know find a good job, what do they do? And so we're helping with food boxes and whatever we can. Do help. you do you differentiate between those who are truly in need and those who are just looking for an easy way out? You know, it's really um, sometimes hard to tell um, because, um, you know, yeah. I, I mean, how do, how do you judge? How do you weigh it? And, yeah. um, but and we, how do you turn someone away? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's very tough. You know, really, how Especially would you do kids. that? In a cold situation when it's, you know, they could freeze out on the street. Yes, it's, it's very, um, very difficult to say no. Yeah, I bet. I bet. So how do you get money? Well, we have um, three fundraisers a year. One is a live um, television auction in the fall with KMVT. One is our live, uh, our, not live, but um, dinner auction in the spring. And then we do a solicitation letter at Christmas. Um, other than that, it's the kindness of people sending in uh, monthly checks to support us. Um, and uh, we couldn't do it without the community. We really, really And Rot not. Rotary has supported you many times. Oh, we absolutely. Have, yeah, yeah. Yes, and thank that's, you. That's what we do, you know, and that's, you know, why we do fundraisers to help support mm -hmm. your organizations along with so many others because it's so difficult to raise money all the time. It's not, you know, some people might make one-time donation, but, and that's great. However, it's every day. Yes. Every day, 365. Yeah. Yeah. Will you take, um, do you want people to drop food off at Valley House? What will you accept right now? Clothing? What? Anything, except for knickknacks. <laughs> you have to dust knickknacks and you have to have a place to put them. Oh, but yeah. we bring in, we, we take in furniture, we take in appliances, small, small appliances, um, 
anything that would furnish a house because the people are there only for a short time and when they're able to get into a house they have nothing to put into that house and so we have storage units that we help um, bring furniture in and and things that they're going to need in their house and and we help them furnish their houses and so we can take we can take anything in right now the big need is is food the uh, the people out in the community that so many are just hungry period and so we are handing out you know, food boxes. We have Thanksgiving boxes to hand out. We're we're getting them ready right now. And um, you know, if if people need help, come um, nine to. I'm our hours are longer than this, but nine to four Monday through Thursday is the best time to come in if you need a food box. Okay. So should they call you? Is there a number you can give out so people can call to say, do you need volunteers too, Sharon? Oh yeah, we we <laughs> we actually have had many volunteers come in um, the last couple of months, and so appreciative of that. And yes, we do um, need the volunteers. So if there are people out there that can help us come in and make food boxes up, or you know, help us to sort clothing because you know we also have clothing rooms. And um, what's the and number yes, that people it's could call? Seven three four. Seven seven three six. Okay. So I suppose any kind of canned goods, if people go to the store, they can buy a few extra cans of this and that and drop it off. Absolutely, and paper products, personal hygiene products, um, warm <laughs> clothing, uh, coats and blankets. Um, we can use all of the, that type of thing. Okay. Does the need go up? I'm, uh, this is probably a stupid question, but does the need go up when the weather turns cold? Well, obviously it does because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because they, more people have come to our door just in the last couple of weeks than you know ever. So yes. And what about the people um, actually living in the canyon? Because, I mean, let's be real. There are, that's really, for a long time, is our homeless shelter. Mm-hmm. Um, are those people coming up? Is anyone checking on those people? Do you know? Um, you know, I, I am not. I'm not. Like right in Rock You know what I mean? Yes, it's exactly. Like, are they I, I know up? that they are there. And um, when they come in, we ask. And they have to fill out a form of, you know, what's going on with them. Where Are they in a motel or are they in, in a home or where are they staying? And um, we're not seeing a lot of that, no, um, of the people. You know, they, this is, this is you know, people that have not been able to or are not able to make it to the end of the month, mm-hmm. you know, maybe with food stamps or their, or their funds or, you know, they have to pay rent. And so they choose the rent and then they don't right. have enough. Or, Which is a hard choice because, you you yes. know, shelter over food. I mean, in this situation, shelter, if you can help get food, you know, great. But yes. Sharon, you're one of our unsung heroes of the community. <laughs> yes, you devote so much time to this. And uh, kudos to you and bless your heart. And everyone out there should help help you and Valley House and help these people. What's well, the thank, number again there so that much. folks can call? Our telephone number is 734 734- Seven seven three six. Do you have a website by any chance? Or? We are on Facebook. We did have a website, and it was bringing in a lot of people from other states, and uh, so we had to take ah, that down. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so Facebook right. Valley House, right? Yes. And mm-hmm. okay, and you're right on Addison. Do you want to give your location? Five zero seven Addison Avenue West. Uh, we have our office hours are during the day. And uh, just come on in, and, and we'll give you a tour and show you what's going on. All right, Sharon Brashears, thank you thank very you. much for what you do. We Keep appreciate up the it. Good voice. And this is Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX. 7360300 is the number to call, as always, here on Top Story. That number never changes, never goes away. You Never might well. go, we might come and go, but That's the number right. stays the same. The number will always be the 736 same. 736-0300. <laughs> Yesterday's $100 instant winning name is John Delmore. John Delmore, congratulations. And your $100 word of the day is globe. Globe. Yeah, like the globe of the earth. G-L- G-L-O-B-E, globe. Yeah. And you can uh, go to our website, newsradio1310.com, click on Word of the Day, type in Globe. Globe. And uh, listen on Friday tomorrow. If you hear your name tomorrow and you played the word today, you win 100 bucks. Well, that's like how that. easy that is. <clears throat> I'll say it doesn't get any easier than that. No. So we had some news. Did you hear that Mike Nichols, the award-winning director and husband of Diane Sawyer passed away last night. I did hear about that. Of heart, cardiac arrest. I did not know who he was. You didn't? No. Oh, my gosh. But I do know. He was the director of The Graduate, Working Girl, uh, so many, so many things. Um, the song The Graduate was was a huge, I can remember that. I was a teenager 
when uh, the graduate was the big hit and the graduate. I never, I've never seen the movie. The Graduate. I don't think I have. I just seen bits and pieces. I mean, but he, you know, he did Who's Afraid of Virginia Wolf. He did. I, I I've think never he, seen that I one either. I think the man won an Emmy, a Grammy, a Tony, an Oscar. He did. I, mean, I think he, the, he won everything. They call it the EGOT when you he win all four of those. He got the EGOT. That's yeah. for sure. But um, yeah, no, he he was married to Diane Sawyer. Yeah. And so, uh, and I guess he was working on something. He was eighty three, still working, still active. Kelly, he didn't retire. I know. No. I know. He I, was still having a purpose I, in life. I am a low life piece of scum for, I know. for you know retiring. Because yeah. He didn't. No, eighty three, still working, still I know. working on a project. You know that uh, I have to say, just to digress a little bit here, when people are still working in their eighties. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wonder about that. I wonder why would you do that? <laughs> why I, he probably doesn't feel like it's work. Probably doesn't. I mean, and this that, guy that's what they say. Is, if you're yeah. doing something that you love, yeah. you never will work a day in your life. I know it. You know, so I mean, he did the birdcage. He did uh, closer. He did angels in America. I think he did Silkwood. He did the Odd Couple. He did Spam a lot. I mean, the guy did so many things. Why would you quit? It must be so much fun. It must be. Well, Especially being not a director. to mention lucrative. Well, I'm sure they don't really need the money. I but, mean, but his, here's wife, the thing. his wife has a little job. Yeah, you know? that's right. But yeah. You, but you got to figure when you are used to making the huge bucks, really, it's kind of like a drug in that you have to almost continue doing that in order to maintain the lifestyle that you have come to enjoy or your ego you know really i mean if you're making millions of dollars a year and then all of a sudden and and, and i'm thinking you know if i would were making millions of dollars a year i would be taking most of that and setting it aside so that i would have something to live on but most people don't do that i mean well, look, look at the look at the rock and roll stars and the sports figures and stuff that make literally that somebody signed a, a contract the other day for a pitcher Oh, yeah. For over nine years, it was like three hundred and twenty-six million dollars. That's right. Dollars. Mm-hmm. I think they broke it down and, to sixty-eight thousand dollars a day. And you watch when he's done, he won't have anything left. Oh, I, I will know. almost bet you. I don't believe that. I, I mean, some of them are good. Of them some don't. of them don't. I know a lot of them don't. Um, but you know, some of them are very smart with it, and some you know have unlimited endorsements until they beat their wife or beat their kid or. <laughs> Uh, do something. Um, so you when know. they retire after making these, you know, millions of dollars uh, a day over their lives, and then they apply for that Social Security, which is going to pay them what, like twelve, fourteen, fifteen hundred a month. Well, they get it, it's based on the last few years of your employment. I don't know how it works if you're making hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, in but, the NFL, uh, they have pensions as well. Yeah. well so, that, you, but yeah. you know, they also play. You know, their their career is not that long. You know, That's true. I mean, really, That's some true. can be in there a year, two years. You could get hurt, you're devastated, and you're done, and your yeah. earning potential. Well, John is Elway gone. worked how many years uh, as a football player, and now his knees are messed up. Oh, his and... brain. He has he has no short term memory now. Really? Yeah. No, he's one in the lawsuit. Well, I don't uh, have that, dementia. and I never played football. No, he's he's only fifties. He's he's a young guy still. What and was your name again? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, they're they're earning capacity. They aren't playing football for forty five years. Oh, I understand that. I and, know, but uh, but but music uh, or uh, film directors and stuff like this guy. I mean, they they can do that right up until, well, they, until they, they die. They get residuals obviously. too. Every movie, every time they play, I, I you residuals that, yeah. over and over and over again. And I don't even know if they but fiddle him, with Social Security. You know, they might not well, even worry about it. It would probably anyway. Be there a, should be some means testing for that, but we don't pass that. But you know what? He probably enjoyed what he did every day. Yeah. Eighty three. I felt badly for her. I guess they had a really great love story. You met her when he was fifty four, and. Hmm. You know, they've been together like 29 years. I, I love Diane Sawyer. I think she's awesome. So badly for her. Well, we're going to talk about the Emperor coming up next here on Top oh, Story yeah. on News Radio 1310 KLIX. 736-0300 is the number to call. Still 31. Oh, good. It's kind of hanging in right there for now. Which, by the way, we're going to do our tour today. Anyone interested in the City Hall, we're going to do a tour of the Banner Building. Uh, old clinic, and then a lot. The lake oh, really? Lot. Yeah. Uh, what so time is people, that? 11.30, city council. So anybody's welcome for that? Yeah. All right, show We've up. We've been open for everything. So. See what the city's doing. Yeah, a right. little committee. Sounds good. 
Well, I know somebody else. This will be warm enough. Yeah, exactly. I know somebody else who's open. Who? Canyon Pawn. Oh. Yeah. Twin Falls' newest pawn shop. And we talk about him each day. And sometimes we give him kind of a hard time, Dave Hansen and the crew. He had a birthday this week. I don't know how old he is. I don't know. I don't, oh. well, it doesn't matter. He survived his birthday. <laughs> Well, it does matter, actually. Why? You know, because. I mean, Why? He's younger than I am, so it matters what birthday he's having. Everyone's younger than you are. Yeah. No. <laughs> but at any rate, well, that's the truth. Yeah. Uh, go on into Canyon Pond where they got guns, they've got uh, camping supplies, they've got gold, they got jewelry, they got rings, they got watches, uh, they've got fishing supplies, they got tools, they got woodworking stuff. I mean, it's a pawn shop. Mm-hmm. If you go in there, you're liable to see just about anything. And if you go in there today and you don't see that, go in tomorrow. You'll probably see it then. Yeah. Uh, they're at the uh, corner of 3rd Avenue South and Shoshone Street, right across from Will's Toyota, right on the corner where Vickers Western Store used to be. Got a big sign out front. It's really difficult to miss. If you drive by there and you miss it, then you have big problems, my friend. Sorry. So stop by Canyon Pond. You got Pond, issues, tell them people. Yeah, you got issues. <laughs> you got issues. <laughs> Um, so Canyon Pond, that's the place you want to be. It'd be a great mm. time to go to for Christmas shopping and Hanukkah shopping. And... Yeah, okay, it is the um, eve of December 16th, I checked. Okay, and... So the first... Oh, really? Yeah, so it's this is a deal with, with Jewish holidays. They start sundown before is the first night. It goes sundown to sundown because the beginning <sighs> of the world was dark, I and see. that's why. So I could never be Jewish. It's too confusing for no, me. No, whenever you see it, uh, whenever you see it on the on the um, calendar, if it's the seventeenth, you know it starts the night of the sixteenth. You know, starts sixteenth the night before. It's just the day before. It's not that hard. Okay, so it would be so. Okay, today's the seventeenth. Oh, we're late. No, that might be the second day of Hanukkah. I know. We have eight days. But if you wanted to catch the first day, then you'd be late. Well, yeah, See, you, you just have to look on the confusing. calendar. It's oh, yeah, it's hard to look on a calendar, Kelly. It's too confusing. Yeah, like I you're going to be Jewish anyway. I Give me a break. Wanted, why don't we just wipe that out what altogether? What if I wanted to be part of the Jew crew? Well, then I would call you and say we're having our Hanukkah party on this night. Show up. I, How hard is that? I wouldn't be. I'd be a day late. No, no, no we would invite I could show you. Up on time. It doesn't just meet because it's a holiday. We We schedule it. Okay. What is the matter with you? Okay, what I'm is just, wrong with you? You can't I'm look at a saying, calendar? I'm just saying. I'm trying to explain to people when they see a holiday, it starts the night before. That's how it works. <laughs> what is wrong with that? Go sundown. It's just like with the Sabbath. It starts sundown Friday night and ends sundown Saturday. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Um, uh, you should. All right. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, President Barack Obama plans to announce to the world uh, his plan on, immigra- on the immigration system. Uh, the steps he will lay out tonight in a primetime address will fuel a debate over his use of executive authority to enact change without the agreement of an opposition Congress. Conservatives are uh, howling that Obama's effort to shield millions of illegal immigrants from deportation oversteps his own authority and infringes the Constitution. His backers say that he is simply exercising his power as the king, I mean, his power to select which areas of law to prioritize and addressing a major national issue that seems to elude Congress. So he. It hasn't eluded Congress because Congress has had a bill for like 510 days now that the House hasn't voted on, even though they know they have the votes for it. If Congress wants to deal with this issue, why aren't they dealing with it? They've waited long enough. My gosh, deal with it. This is basically keeping parents here whose kids are Americans. Why would you want to separate families? Why isn't Congress Mm -hmm. dealing with this? Really? Why would you want to? But again... Family values. What happened to the party of family values? That is aside from the real issue here. That is the same thing that Ronald Reagan did. They didn't want to separate families from the kids. Okay. Okay. Here's here's how we explain that. The Obama White House is pointing to legal precedents established by earlier presidents who have used executive power to reshape the immigration system, notably John F. Kennedy, Richard yep. Nixon, Ronald Reagan, and Bush's father, George H.W. Bush. The elder Bush, for example, elder Bush. Well, Isn't he, that a Bush? Yeah. It's, I'm, sure, though, I'm sure Bush, that one will run for president, for too. For example, <laughs> used executive power to permit one and a half million undocumented spouses and children of people shielded from deportation by a previous law to also stay in the United States. 
White House officials point out that that number accounted for about 40% of illegal immigrants in the country at the time. Obama could cover a similar proportion of the current total of 11.4 million illegal immigrants with the moves he is expected to announce. Lawyers who disagree with that view say Bush was using his power to oh, fix yeah. problems with a recently passed immigration law, not acting alone after Congress refused to act. For his part, Reagan used executive power to help 100,000 families caught in a loophole included in a comprehensive immigration reform bill passed by Congress in 1986. And his his was for parents and spouses as well. So why would you want to separate the parents and spouses from their kids? We'll be right back. (laughs) 7360300 is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. We're just looking at the uh, snow that's falling. Poor Buffalo. As we want to shuffle off to Buffalo. Oh, my gosh. I mean, they had, what, five feet? They're expecting another three feet? Uh, Can you imagine? I can't even imagine those numbers. We get three inches, and we think the world is ending. Well, this is what's weird, and I know you have to do an ad, but it's weird that they're paying people, fans. You know, three of the seven deaths were from shoveling. Heart attacks. Yeah, anyway, yeah. but they paid um, some fans to for ten dollars an hour to help scoop out the tons of snow they have in the stadium because they have a game this weekend, <laughs> and they're giving them game tickets. But you think, okay, you have a game. Who can get there? <laughs> right. You can't shovel your car out. There yeah. are no roads. Who's coming to the game? Well, they'll stay at home and watch it on TV. Except the people that are shoveling. Yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. So anyway, we're talking about uh, Emperor uh, President Obama, oh, who is uh, will be initiating his immigration plan. And we have a caller. I hope you're still there. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kelly and Jill. He's there. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'm on a bad part of the road. Well, Uh-oh. be careful. Well, well, hurry up then. Okay, so here's the deal. This is my opinion. This was already told twice already that it would never have to happen again. And it's happening again. Why? Because we keep getting out the mop before we turn off the water. We have to fix the borders and the problems with people staying too long before we do any of this, because as soon as you do this, people are going to come flooding. Yeah. And as far as being fair or anything else, Jill, the people lose their parents all the time for uh, going to jail for breaking the law. Yes, all the time. You break the law, you shouldn't be rewarded for breaking the law. My personal opinion is if you're not a citizen and you have a child in this country, it's not a citizen. That, but that's my opinion. They, well, according to our Constitution, I mean, you are a citizen. If you're born in the U.S., you're a citizen. How else would you do it? We're Actually, all born the, in the U.S. Uh, constitutional experts say that that was misread, too. That it oh, shouldn't of be course. That way. They did that for the... For the uh, slavery issue that only we have, beca- but it was not meant for everybody. It only misread so. because of Obama. That's the only time you've ever heard this. It's misread because of well, Obama. Hey, he misreads it all the time. Oh, why can't please. anybody else for Give crying out break. loud? Talk- it's just amazing. Why don't the Republicans come up with a plan or work with the bill that they already have to deal because with? Because they were told with they it. would be vetoed when they want to when they they that want to uh, secure true. the border. They want to secure the border. No, that isn't that isn't going to happen. That's the problem. That's right part there. of it's the plan. The that's part of the bill they have in the house that Boehner isn't voting on 67 senators voted on that bill he's kept it in his drawer because he knows they're going to vote on it and they'd pass it work with it then do something don't just put your head in the sand there's people here that have been here and deal with it in spite of all that can Obama really do what he's going to do like can, like every other president has he, done absolutely can he do that? Can absolutely seven three six zero three hundred top story you're on the air Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, lovely, beautiful Jill. How you doing this morning? I'm great. How are you? I love your spunkiness. Oh, thank uh, you. Listen, <laughs> listen um, all of you uh, conservatives that want to block people from becoming citizens or whatever, read the Constitution, read the 14th Amendment, but read it, read it properly. And also, what the president is going to do is legal. Completely legal. So I don't, you know, you can raise your voice and say, oh, this has got to be done. No, we're not kissing nobody's behind. What he's doing is legal. Got that? So I hope he goes far and I hope he helps a lot of people. 
Thank you. It's just interesting well, that he, when he does it, oh, it's a problem, but everyone else does it, it's okay. It okay. doesn't matter what he does. The 14th Amendment says all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law or deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. I don't think there's any, there's no question that a lot of these kids are citizens under they are the citizens. Constitution, but the parents are not. Yeah. That's the issue. They caused that situation and now they want us to ignore the law and make it good. Is they're going to get they're going to give doing? these people work visas. Work visas. They're not going to get citizenship. They're going back to the end of the line. They're My giving gosh. them amnesty. They, they should are, be deporting them. That is them, not but amnesty. Not. That is not amnesty. Work visas and they're also checking they're for criminal them background to checks. stay here. You know what? And your kid is Why would you try do that? Try going to Mexico and do, try making this thing reversed and going to Mexico. You'd be in jail by the time you hit the border. I understand that, but if you do not do with deal with this, like the Republicans have not, um, your head is in the sand. You still have 11 million people here. These are people that are living in the shadows. These are people that are having crimes against them happening. Women being raped, whatever. So why they would aren't they want to come here? They aren't going for the police. Why would they want to come here? Oh, Kelly, why things do you say so ridiculous bad. things? You just said it. I'm I saying mean, they have no, they have no legal... Why would they even want to come here? Can you let me finish? They have no legal recourse. Let them come out of the shadows so they don't have to be raped and not be able to report it to the police. Why would you want to come here just to be raped and used like that? Why I mean, do you why say just, things that are so stupid? it makes sense. Oh, does it make sense? Give me a break. So the president's going to speak tonight. Kudos I think to it's, President I Obama. Think it's 6 o'clock local time. Good for him. 8 o'clock Eastern. So we'll, we'll see what he has to say. Want to see the Republican plan? We'll watch, there we'll isn't the one. the good emperor do what he wants to do because he's going to do it anyway. They did it and, and that's okay. And it's time now for the Huckabee Report brought to you by Waddell and Reed. You can hear the Huckabee Report each weekday at this time, brought to you exclusively by Waddell and Reed. Laura Nelson, Josh Funk, and Steve Sting are financial advisors. Uh, warming up a little bit, so some of that uh, manure out on the dairies and feedlots <laughs> might be turning to liquid from the frozen state. Good thing, because they take care of both. <laughs> well, that's right. Not to worry, because the low and honey loader can handle it. Liquid, frozen, doesn't matter. dry, doesn't make any difference. The Broken. low and honey Who loader cares? from Stanley and Company is the miracle from heaven. And Pat Hartzell with Stanley and Company can uh, fix it up so you can see one of these in operation. He would love to help you out. And all you'd have to do is go there and watch it. You can ask the owner questions. You can uh, look at it up close, you know, give you a wrench, take it apart, see how it easy it is to work on, mm -hmm. uh, all that kind of stuff. And uh, so if you have a big feedlot or dairy operation, uh, this might be something you want to consider, the Lowen Honey Loader. I know you've heard about it because we talk about it all the time. And we know you listen. That's right. Pat Hartzell is the guy, 280-1167 with Stanley and Company. He can uh, fix you up, hmm. as we say. Well, uh, besides the uh, retirement party coming up tomorrow night, 5 to 8 o'clock at the Turf Club... Is there any? Why is there any other news? Well, what? Uh, we there's do have, possibly something else. We do know, we do have a, a new showcase right now. It's Santa's sleigh showcase. Santa. Uh, where we want to make your holiday dreams come true by offering you the chance to win your choice of items that just might be on Santa's sleigh. There is a Hoyt Charger bow with a Hoyt Western Accessories package from Advantage Archery. There's a car DVD entertainment system from the power plant. There's a Microsoft Surface 2-in-1 tablet computer plus one full year of PMT's TechForce Unlimited Computer Repair from PMT. There's a two-night retreat to Knob Hill Inn from Thousand Springs Resort. There's a holiday dream clean machine package from Gem State Paper and Supply. And there's a holiday decoration package from Design 125. Now, you win this thing, you get to pick which one of those you want. Mm. This ends December 16th, so go to our website, newsradio1310.com, click on Santa's Showcase. Uh, it'll take a few of your points to enter this, but do it. Do it. And use as many points as you want to enter this multiple times. That's right. So there you go. Along huh? with winning lunch with you and me. <laughs> that, yeah, that's right. You can do that uh, where it Same says win lunch with Kelly and Jill. Yeah. So you just as well, Same while time. you're there, take your points and spend them. 
There's no sense just letting them build up. They're not doing you any good. No. Just use them. Use them. That's you could the, win so many things. That's right. The points are there to spend, not to not to hang on not to. Not to accumulate. That's right. You know, yeah. you can't take them with you. No. You know, you can't take your money or your v, or your uh, loyal listener club points with you. No, you can so just use, use them. them. That's right. Tomorrow. I can't believe tomorrow's Friday already. I know. And your party. My party is tomorrow. Are you going to have a stylist? What are you going to wear? How's I've, your hair? I've How's already been to my stylist. I got a haircut. I got a one of my once every three month haircuts earlier this week. That's it? I'm ready to go. That's it? I clean up nice. I'll a tell new you. shirt? So we'll see you. We'll <laughs> see you tomorrow here on Top Story. Goodbye, Jill. Bye, Cal.